Rock icon David Bowie has arrived in Wellington for his One New Zealand show. The last visit was the Glass Spider Tour of 1987, but the 57-year-old is promising a much quieter, more intimate performance tomorrow night. You've been named the most influential artist of all time. I've been named lots of things, yeah. <laughs> That's probably one of the nicer yeah, ones. I think it probably is. <laughs> at, at that point, what gets you out of bed in the morning? I mean, what still excites you when you've achieved so much the act in of music? breathing. <laughs> I think. <gasps> oh, there's another one. <laughs> That's two in a row. Right, I'm still good. So you get up and uh, walk about and get some coffee. <laughs> Do you still want to be better and do more? Is there still out there that you want to achieve? Um, no, I don't have that kind of ambition, quite in that way. I mean, I just like to make every day as good as I can. It's very important for me to make each and every show count and be as enthusiastic before I go on the stage as I possibly can be so that it, it you, so that the audience can take some of that away with them. And, which I think is what we've succeeded in doing this entire tour. I really wanted to do this too in a major way and that I hadn't you know, shouldered all this great responsibility of a really theatrical production, which means you're tied to a similar format every night. This tour has been played virtually on a night-to-night -night basis that we've, I've been able to choose the set lists as I've gotten into town, sit in the hotel. What should we do? Rebel, rebel, it's on your desk. I think that my songwriting has been improving tremendously since the beginning of the 90s. Um, and I feel now that the kinds of songs and the work that I'm doing stands up equally as well as part of the things that I've done in the past. So I'm not, I don't feel inhi uh, inhibited by, by what I've done in the past. I don't, it doesn't seem to threaten me. So the best for David Bowie could still be yet to come? I don't know about that. But there'll always be something interesting, I think. What would you like to think is your, is your influence or your legacy? What would you like to think that you have achieved? The idea may be that you don't have to decide that you're a purist in one kind of music uh, or another. That you don't have to wake up as an eight-year-old little white kid from London and say, you know what, I'm a blues singer all the way. <laughs> you, you, can, you can really chop and change and, and choose from different kinds of music. What's the best thing about being David Bowie? What's the best thing about being a human being, I suppose? I think it's... Uh... Oh, I don't know. Going out for a swim. I don't know. <laughs> Picking up my child, giving her a hug. That's probably the nice things about it. Well, it was like dealing with royalty today. There were the minders, security, PR, the lighting had to be perfect. We had to be bang on time and finish after exactly 15 minutes. But then we were dealing with a sort of royalty, music royalty, 35 years in the business and more hits than hot dinners, Ziggy Stardust, Heroes, Fame, Space Oddity, to name a very few. David Bowie, superstar, movie star, a man changing, sat down for a chat with us in Wellington today on the eve of his one-off New Zealand concert. A long way from the lad who began on a plastic saxophone, still pulling a crowd at 57, still seriously cool and still loving what he does. Ground control to Major Tom. Is it still, David, as thrilling for you standing up there now as it was right at the beginning? Well, I tell you, it is in a way. I mean, because it's such a simple show, it's just about interpreting the songs. And uh, I'm really enjoying that this time around. I don't think uh, I've ever enjoyed a, a world tour, which is a massive tour like this, ever. I think this is the, the most enjoyable one. Because the weight of having to run a production every night is not with me, it's just about myself and the band. It's amazing, isn't it? There was an interview a while back with Kate Moss, who, I mean, you were doing stuff before she's, before she's born, and she's a huge, you know, she's absolutely in awe of you. Oh, so you've got this fan base that... that she's that, a cutie. That bro yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that broaches, you know, just crosses generations, doesn't it? It's been fantastic. I mean, it's been a great ride these last 35 years, and, and uh, it's still wonderful. I mean, it's, it's still... 
I, I still can't believe that I get, I'm still as impassioned about writing and recording material and then going out and playing it in concert. It, it just flabbergasts me, frankly. I, I didn't expect it to be much cop after about 35, you know. <laughs> that I wouldn't have that passion about it, you know. I'm just so thankful that, that it, it's approaching 60 and I still feel, I still have the same kind of enthusiasm. It's probably, you know, uh, it's changed its, its character somewhat. It, it, it doesn't necessarily want to just be rebellious for the sake of being rebellious, but there's still, I still get uh, a, a real frisson when I, I discover something new in, in what I'm writing and that I didn't expect to find. It's good, I picked the right career. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a conscious picking the music, or did it kind of come to you? I know you started playing saxophone, didn't you? Yeah, I, I, well, I think I can pinpoint it to actually hearing the first Little Richard record when I was around eight or nine years old. And I just, I, I just wanted to do what he did. Well, I never quite did that. <laughs> he didn't quite. <laughs> but there was a time when I actually thought, when I was about 10 or 12, that I might, if I learnt the saxophone, I might have a chance of growing up and joining his band. <laughs> I really did. And now, I mean, for generations, for, well, for decades, you've been the one that other people have copied. And, and I, was <laughs> I was fascinated to read today, though, Ice Ice Baby. It, you know, it's, it's from you. It's yours. Uh, you yes. <laughs> not sure if I want to take credit for that. Well, but I mean, you, you came up with the inspiration that's inspiring a rap artist, you know? I tell you what, it is lovely to get feedback from the younger bands anyway, you know, because uh, we come across them all the time, because we still do a lot of festivals. Um, and it's really, it's very, I think that's the, one of the most fulfilling things about maybe what I've been doing. I read some lovely stuff about your love with Aman and it was very, and you just said this one's different and I wanted to know how you kind of knew. It sounded, it just sounded so romantic the way it would be. I don't know why I knew, but I was obviously right because we're going on our 14th year now, so it's, it's a very long time. A very long time by most people's relationships, I think. Yeah. So it's particularly good for this industry, I suppose. But I don't think that's anything to really trumpet about. I think it's just, you know, I, the quality of life, you know, has got to be good, you know, and I think I've never enjoyed myself so much. You guys, when you're home in New York, lead a fairly normal life. You walk the streets and you go to restaurants and cook at yeah, home. We, yeah, we're getting out and about in New York. I mean, we've got a, a gilded carriage uh, with four white horses <laughs> that... that um, and a team of footmen. With, uh, to, yes, yeah. the footmen are easy to look, look after, but it's very hard to garage the cold coach, mm. you know? And the horses, there's not, there's, there are no stables in New York anymore. Oh. We walk about and we go to restaurants and it's just like ordinary life. We were um, discussing you in the office, because the whole office wanted to come for the interview. And um, the, 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 the sort of bottom line was, you're 57 and you're still cool. And I don't think there's many people that are still cool at 57. I mean, we figured Mick Jagger had sold out because he's got a night hold, you know, but you're still cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, what am I supposed to say? I'm not quite sure about that. <laughs> Should we just skip that Should one? We... I'm delighted to have fans in your office. I mean, that, that's, yeah, that's the major part of it. The other thing that people make so much about with you is the change. You know, the different... But I was thinking about it. I mean, you are A, a performer, so you yeah. need to change it. And B, what if we didn't change? Wouldn't it be boring? It's just something. It's the, the way that I chose to do music, you know. I mean, uh, initially, it, it, I changed, of course, within all this operation of theatrical devices and all that. I, as a person, I've changed as well. So there's the double change going on, you know. But I did initially want to just do my songs as theatrical events in character. But I just, so there were quite a few of those, you know. But I, in, in myself, have changed, and I no longer want to do that. So more and more, I'm just presenting myself as a, as a performer. And, and, and simple. We are very pleased to have you here. Oh, we're having Whatever guys you're in, we're very pleased to have you. A wonderful time here. They're such hospitable people. It's a delight. Charming, Mr. Bowie. I was wrong, actually. My director, Charlie's just told me the whole station wanted to go to the interview. Well, he and his wife, David Bowie and his wife, not Charlie and his wife, David Bowie and his wife, Iman, have a three year old daughter, Lexi Alexandria, actually. And he told me she has become an ice skater while Dad's been on tour. He also said he misses his girls like crazy.
but I have a sneaking suspicion they may have joined him at some point, but he wasn't going to tell me, which is fair enough, I guess.